Hi, today I thought I'd do a startup guide to doing refining, just show you everything that you'll need. Obviously you know what tools you'll need, the main ones you'll need is just a hammer and a chisel. But, it's the ornament chisel, like that. And, oh it's leaking in here somehow. And one of these scraper things, because they're uh, perfect for picking up things which are stuck like these quite easily obviously you'll need boards if you can try to get them for free doesn't matter where they're from even from things as bad as toasters and stuff like that and foam boards like them uh yeah you obviously need those um that's pretty much all the tools you really need and a screwdriver of course to take the stuff apart and pliers to take um pliers and side cutters to take stuff out but not too important. One which thing which does come in useful is a blowtorch. Mac gas or propane is good enough. A mini butane one I like to use quite often for uh, little things but if you're mounting stuff obviously you're going to need your um, blowtorch. Uh, if you're using acid I'd recommend to start off I use brick and mortar cleaner, salmon stone concentrated cleaner which is about 22% hydrochloric acid and that's useful for things like tin, so solder and things like that that will take apart and um, if you want to make copper chloride I've got a video which was right at the start of um, my channel where I made copper chloride which looks like this, green. You just basically burn copper and sit that burnt copper inside it for a couple of days and it will turn green and that's perfect for eating copper then because without that it won't eat copper. Perfect thing about that acid, it will not, well, it will struggle to eat gold, silver, platinum, palladium, all that sort of stuff. So um, it will eat the base metal and leave the foils. When you, um, if you want to see my videos how I take the boards apart, I've got plenty down below and you can collect your gold pins and things like that. Which for them, you just basically stick them in the acid, you don't even need to take the plastic off, stuff like that. And uh, the gold foils will fall off and you can just take them out at the end. You'll need, which is really helpful, little um, scales. Because you can weigh all the different things, you can work out hourly rates like I do in my videos. And you can also weigh your gold at the end. That's why the uh, blowtorch comes in handy, because you can mount the foils. With the acid I showed you, it won't get the gold pure, it gets tw about 12 to 18 karat gold because that's the uh, plating on the, most of the components is 12 to 18 karat. So, um, yeah, yeah, I'll need further refining, which you can send it to a refiner, which charges about 10% of the uh, end gold. Of course, you'll need little pots to store each of your component, and buckets come in handy. To um, hold stuff, and you can also pan your gold out from chips. So when you burn your chips, you can use your torch again, and uh, it'll become a dust when you shake it. You shake it into like a dust. Pull it for a sieve. So a little mini sieve with um, a really fine sieve you'll need to let the fine dust come through. Whatever rubbish you leave on there, you can um, reburn and try to get more through. And then you basically stick it in one of these buckets. I'll show a video on it soon. And you fill it up in water, the bucket, with it. Mix it in so no um, dust is flowing. And then you just basically leave it about 10 seconds, 10 to 20 seconds. Pour half off, fill it up in water again, leave 10 to 20 seconds and so on. Keep doing that until you're left with gold and maybe a little bit of silicon. And then from there it will just need a refine, which you can send to refiners if you don't... Um, if you can't, can't uh, get hold of things like nitric acid. Um, if you're recovering stuff like ceramics, they won't work in the acid either because um, the acid will only eat half plated pins, like, like these for example. As you can see, they're gold plated on the end, but they're not gold plated on that end. So the acid will be able to get through there and get through to the gold plate and the inside of the gold plate in that way. The fully plated pins it won't be able to get to. That's why I show in my other videos that you should um, cut them. If you have fully plated pins, cut them for that acid. Some acids like acid peroxide will do um, fully plated pins. But 
that starts to get more complicated that way, so it's easier just to cut your gold plate pins up as you're going. Obviously, you don't want to save them up because you'll just spend forever cutting them. Another good thing for your, um, if you're refining yourself, is to get one of these. You can get them for real cheap, about a quid. And what's perfect is that you can stick all your gold plated stuff you have in here. So if you have like gold fingers or something, which is the um, these ram will have like a gold plated strip down which I've cut and you cut them and you stick them in acid. Uh, they can go in there and then you can fill it up in acid and then it'll be under the acid and then um, to stop like bubbles catching them because there's a bubble caught in um, the fingers, the acid obviously can't get to it and it won't uh, eat the base metal to leave the foils. So you can just like lift it up and put it back in and giving it oxygen also speeds it up so it's perfect, that's why people recommend bubblers. And you can just go out every now and then, and then you can put it back in and leave it, and that will speed it all up. Obviously your motherboard is your main thing you need, because that's where you get your stuff from. I'd recommend getting them for free, like taking them from computers and things like that you find on the streets, but if you can get, if you have to um, pay for them, maybe at the start you can, it doesn't matter what you pay, just because it's learning, but after that, you don't really want to be paying like a computer board like that, you wouldn't want to pay more than 50p for, really. Which, buying things on eBay, things like that, you're never going to get for that price. So, uh, you got to look around where you buy stuff. So these are VGA. So they have sold on the bottom. As you can see. So yeah, um, these you, that one you'll find on the motherboard, that type of VGA. And then you also get these from RAM. They'll have a couple of grams of gold normally per kilo. But um, obviously sometimes they can have, inside they'll have bomb wires. And sometimes they're aluminium, which is going to have no gold whatsoever in it. And sometimes they're gold, which is pure 24 karat gold wires they'll have in there. Uh, so obviously the yields of um, the amount of gold you'll get is going to be affected. These are little blob. ICs you'll find on motherboards, they can get processed the same way as uh, your BGA and the gold on them are amazing the amount of gold, you'll get about 10 grams a kilo just from that blob but because it's on a board that'll put its gold down to about 2 grams a kilo unless they have aluminium bond wires and you have none these are IC chips so that's from RAM that one there and then you get different ones from motherboards these ones aren't as good yeah, all different types. Different shapes, sizes and all sorts. And uh, the, each leg has one gold bomb wire one, or one aluminium one, but obviously you want the gold. So ones like that will yield a lot more, because it's got loads of legs. The things like that, the bomb wires will be bigger, just because it's a bigger chip, but they have much less legs. And it's a big fat thing of plastic, so the yield on these is a lot lower than the yield on these little chips like that. Uh, obviously you've got your CPUs. The old ceramics tend to be better than the uh, new CPUs, a lot better. These ones aren't too good, AMD. They're one of the worst ceramics you can get, so is the Sun ceramics. The best ones are obviously, uh, if I can find them. all my good ones I put at the bottom so I sort them. They'll have like a back like that. These ones as you can see has aluminium bomb wires in. If they have this epoxy type thing on the back, they'll have bomb wires inside. It's a Pentium net. As you can see they're aluminium wires. So the only gold on this is the legs. Which is really really well plated because they're old. These had gold bomb wires. All the way around the outside. That's a... Uh, Special camera chip. Cirex. CPU. And as you can see, again, it's aluminium bomb wires. And the one you want to find is ones like this. That has a gold tab. And quite often, I think they have uh, gold bomb wires. I got one which I broke open, which showed the... Uh, Gold bomb wires, I'll find it out and come back. There's one left. If it will zoom. 
Get over here in the light. As you can see, the gold wires on them, pure 24 karat gold, which the acids will sort that out, so you don't actually have to scrape them off. And then obviously these legs would be really nice, and it's got a gold tab as well. That's all gold plated. So these CPUs are really, really good. And then you get the old CPUs. Here's a fibre, the best fibre you can get, which is a plastic, it means. And as you can see, if I turn it around, these have nice gold plated legs. In the middle, which is broken off, I broke them off. They have like a, uh, it has a weird middle. And I broke them off and they're the same as uh, BGA. They have bomb wires in. And then obviously you've got the MOSFETs. The other fibre CPUs, I, I think I've taken all the parts so I can't show you. But um, they're rubbish really. These are MOSFETs. So uh, it's like a chip with a copper piece on. These, uh, just over half the weight of that will be copper. And they are quite heavy, so they're pretty good. I've got video on the hourly rate of uh, removing these. I've got the videos of hourly rates of all the different types of chips as well. But um, they'll have, sometimes, quite rare, but quite often they're, well, not quite often, it's quite rare. Sometimes they'll have um, gold bomb wires in, three or four of them. So they can be processed the same as IC chips, but they yield really bad. It takes about 20 kilos to get about a gram of gold. The copper's all right on them. Then we've got the tactical switches, which is the ones which have um, like a little button. A box fell over and all my stuff went all over my floor, that's why it's so messy. <laughs> my camera's not very good, but you press it in and it clicks. The little switches you have like on... Um, uh, what would it what would it be an example? You know when you have an electric and you just press a button to turn something on and off, it'll have a tactical switch behind it. And they'll have um the disc behind has a chance of being silver, but the um part which is under the disc, which it the disc pushes into, is the main silver inside. And then we have crystal oscillators. Open the bag up. All different shapes and sizes. These uh, have silver in. They'll have like a little um, disc of silver in there, which is gold plated. The amount of silver in them is really rubbish. It's like a kilo of them would get like four grams of silver. <laughs> it's really not worth doing. And they take hours to take apart, so I wouldn't recommend doing them unless you can find someone that buys them. These are the. Uh, the best things for gold recovery on a motherboard. They replace the CPU sometimes. And it's the gold corner BGA. The ones with the heat sink tend to not be as good as the ones without the heat sinks. This is the heat sink, the silver part. But the good ones yield about 10 to 12 grams of gold per kilo. And these rubbish ones, that's a good one, that. And the rubbish ones will yield about 3 or 4 grams a kilo from yields I've seen. But um, it really varies. I've seen people get zero grams a kilo because they've all been aluminium or copper bomb wires inside and they're worthless. So that's another one which should be good. The um, They get bent off the bottom of um, the CPUs. Let me find the bottoms. Originally... They'd have been stuck to that, and I've bent them off. So this bottom gets separated, and that can go into hydrochloric acid, like I showed you, with the burnt copper in, so copper chloride. And as you can see, it's got a little tiny bit of gold plate in. It's not very good. But it'll take kilos and kilos of them to get a gram of gold. They're not too good. But the uh, actual ones like these are really, really good. I put with these the... Um, See, that's from the middle, it's broken. That's from the middle of the CPU I showed you earlier, the fibre CPU. But I put in here the little blobs I showed you with the BGA. These are the little blobs. So 
what it looks like on the other side. They're the exact same as the Gold Corner BGA. So if they're good, some good stuff, they have a good chance of um, yielding 10 grams of gold per kilo. And then these are gold fingers I was talking about on the RAM. You get them on slot cards as well. And the gold plating on them are really, really good. And they just go in the copper chloride and they'll get about 3 to 6 grams of gold per kilo, I'd expect. These are MLCCs. You'll find them on um, all over the motherboards. You can get different sizes, some of them are tiny. But um, these are really, really hard to tell. Non-magnetic ones are the best. So if you put a magnet against them, neodymium is the best magnet to use because they're really powerful. You'll see which ones are good and which ones are bad. The magnetic ones uh, tend to yield nothing, but they'll have silver still, but a small amount. But the non-magnetic are the good ones. You also get the um, old style MLCCs, which are here. I'll still open the bag up. They're only found on old boards. As you can see. Don't mistake them for the silver version. I'll show you in a minute. You can get them in different colours. As you can see, when you break them open, they look like an MRCC inside. Like that one's been broken. But there's some which are kind of a resist resistor style, which are these long ones. And then you also get, sometimes it's these little fat ones. Fat silver pieces. And then most of the time you'll find ones like up here where my thumb is. It's like a square. And then you also get blue versions. If you're not sure, just break one open. And if it looks like a um, MRCC inside, then it will be. Um, just use side cuts to break them open. Don't mistake them for these, which is just contain silver. It'll have a silver plated disc inside. Uh, the silver in them are literally like eight grams of silver per kilo, whereas these um, old style MRCCs will have a lot more silver in them. And they also have like six or seven grams of palladium, which at the moment is worth a lot more than gold. Then you have these, the little slots where your um, dip chips go. Sometimes there'll be um, a diff If they look like this, then uh, you can just throw them away. They got contain no gold, no good stuff. If they look like this, where you can see the little balls, ball shaped things, and they're gold plated inside, you get different style ones. Then they're good and they contain a lot of gold, those. I've never actually recovered myself, but I've seen people say that they have a gram per kilo. These are transistors, I don't really know much about them, so I'm not really going to talk about them, they're quite rare anyway. These are little um, switch things, where the buttons go back and forward, let. Uh, they should contain gold inside them, they have gold plated pins, but some have gold plated ball, balls inside, which are really, really well plated. This is tantalum, you get different styles. There's other types of tantalum as well, but they're rare. This is mostly SMD tantalum and epoxy tantalum. Those, there's a buyer. Uh, um, yeah, I'll put it in the description. There's a buyer for these and they um, pay decent money for them. Then obviously you've got your um, fuses, which will have a little bit of silver in normally. There's different styles. This is motherboard fuses. You've got the silver end ones and the gold end ones here. The ones with gold ends obviously have quite a lot of gold in. The ones with silver just have a little bit of silver. Uh, then we've got LEDs. I've just put a load in the bag, that's why. There's not many here. Here's some. They have a chance to have one pure gold bomb wire inside. So if you find any of those little LEDs, definitely save them. And you've got gold plated pins. Like, um, these are IDE. Normally they're smaller than that. But they're gold plated. Sometimes they can be brass. Be careful if you're buying. Um, they're the same as these IDE. That's a pink one. You get them all different colours. And they'll have a couple of grams of gold per kilo normally. But again it depends. If they're brass and you're going to get none. There's loads of different types of pins. Like here's IDE again. On the motherboard. Different styles, and um, all over your motherboard, there's going to be gold plating like in these slots, 
in those slots and them <laughs> they're obviously everywhere gold plated stuff but they're not worth near as much as uh the chips so chips is the first thing you should definitely think about removing uh not really much more to show obviously that's the gold pins from a ram slot sometimes ram, ram slots where the ram goes in won't have any um gold inside so check them before you take the whole lot apart if you want to find fast ways for all this stuff i've been doing uh check out my other videos i show all sorts of um different components i move that's the the, the um battery definitely remove them if they're still there and throw them away be careful when you dispose them because they can uh, be really dangerous. Some of them will have um, silver in and some will just be the lithium. Uh, and you see all the different things I was talking about here. Again, gold plated parts. You see gold plated pins there. The inside of that would be the opposite version of that, but it's pretty much the same. Gold plated pins, all of them. And then I was talking about the MLCCs earlier. These are all the MLCCs. You can get really little resistors like them, all different sizes, but you can put them together, they can be processed the same. The resistors will only have um, silver and maybe a bit of rhodium, but very small amounts. You get the low grade board like these, you definitely don't want to be paying much for because you're just getting a bit of steel you don't really need because that's pretty much all that is. And some silver capacitors not really worth much. As you can see, these have been taken apart a bit, like these would have had chips now in them. Uh, these relays across there are worth nothing unless they're the yellow ones like I showed the old style MLCCs uh, I think that's pretty much everything sorry the quality is not too good my camera cracked a couple of weeks ago well a couple of months ago um, another tool which would be helpful is a heat gun they're not necessary but heat guns are perfect for foam boards as you can see a chisel is going to struggle to get all of that off your chisel's going to struggle to get that off because it's all little. And then obviously sometimes you get boards like that. Again, your chisel's going to be terrible for things like these. And they're worth quite a lot of gold on these. These like some of them are walkie talkies in here. If I find one gold plate and I'll show you. Most of these are massively old walkie talkies. Here's a good example. Under here we'll have uh, little gold plated pieces. It's got a bit of plastic in front so I can't show you. There you go. They're where the uh, buttons would have been, these little dots. And they're quite well plated, quite thick plated. These plating is enig, so massively thin. It's not even worth really going for. You'll find them all over all sorts of motherboards. Obviously there's copper. Inside these will have plenty of copper you can rip apart. All this have nice copper pieces, you can see some's falling out. You get loads of copper. Um, relays is what I've been doing videos on lately. If on a motherboard you have these little things, you can get big ones. I've done all the big ones on a video so uh, you can't really see them. See any in there, there's a couple like that. But if they have on a motherboard, um, obviously it has writing on a motherboard. If right next to it has a K or a R, no, yeah, an R, it'll uh, likely be a relay. And they're really brittle. They'll break open so easy. You'll tell if it's a relay. If they're really, really strong, they'll be a capacitor, so they'll just have aluminium in. Here's some more capacitors I'll show you. These little capacitors, are, they can be sold as dirty aluminium to most scrapyards. So if you want to save them, these are CPU slots, that's where the CPU would have slotted in. And they have nice gold plating in. There's all sorts of gold plated uh, material in there. Um, there's a few more things, but it's not really stuff you find much. Like hard drives will have uh, platters. If you take hard drives apart, you'll get little platters. Normally these little ones are glass. The big ones, like these, are aluminium, but they're plated with platinum, which are really is massively thin. It's not worth removing. The way I recover the platinum from these, as you see, I bent that one, so it shows that uh, that one's aluminium. 
the way I recover the platinum for the ones with aluminium, I mount them first because I like to mount metal. The stuff I pour off is obviously going to be um, just pure aluminium. And the rubbish you scrape off at the top will be a mix of aluminium and the platinum. And then you can um, recover the platinum from that. But if you don't want to do that, I just sell the disc as aluminium just because the platinum so thin you'd need probably hundreds of kilos to get a gram of platinum from it. Uh, yeah, so that seems to be about everything. As you can see with tools, of course if you're doing gold fingers, it's always useful to have some cutters. But again, you can just use uh, your pliers for it. So it's not too important. I like to have large ones of these and small side cutters, large and small, so then they can uh, work on different things. But again, it's not necessary. Uh, yeah, that seems about everything, really. The um, throwing boards, like I showed you the little gold plate in area. If they're black, they're graphite, so they'll have no um, precious metal. If you do recover the um, gold with the acid, use either plastic or glass container. And if it's plastic, make sure it's a plastic which the acid won't eat. Because if it's metal, obviously it's going to eat through it and go everywhere. Also, I'd recommend having a catch tray under the uh, pot, even if it's glass. Just because if it breaks or there's a problem with it and it starts leaking, It'll uh, leak into the tray then, not all over your side. I had a problem with that a long time ago, and it leaked all over my boards. Didn't really affect them too much, but could have been worse. Uh, yeah, that seems to be everything. Thanks for watching my video. Don't forget to subscribe, because I've been doing so well lately, I can't wait to hit 400 subscribers. Uh, once your boards are depopulated, I can't side. As you can see here, these are all boards which I've finished with. They still have stuff on, but it's stuff I've not bothered removing, like the rubbish like that, and you've got aluminium there. It's not really worth my time. I do leave the re resistors on, which can have gold inside, gold-plated, and a little bit of wire, maybe. Little chips I leave on, just because, even though they do have gold, it's such a small amount, I don't waste my time. As you can see, I've got a lot of boards. All of these are full of boards. Uh, a couple hundred kilos. That's all, because this is all waste, it'll have about 25% of the weight of that, will, 25 to 50% will be copper, because inside it's lined with sheets of copper. These ones don't have copper inside, apart from if it has green like that, it'll have one layer of copper, one little thin, it's like um, aluminium foil, it looks like inside, but it's probably a bit thicker. And it has loads of them, these ones will have loads, these ones like that. Sometimes the boards can be gold plated underneath, normally these lighter coloured ones are, and if they're from um, sound blast speakers, scratch them and you'll see, if you scratch it and it's a copper colour, it'll be copper underneath, if you scratch and it's gold, it's obviously gold underneath. Um, yeah, so I save these up and there's buyers which will pay you to pay you for these boards and they'll uh, burn them, because they can be burnt, and once they're burnt, the plastic will burn off and you can just peel the uh, copper sheets off and save them up, they add up real quick. Some boards I leave like this because this board, for example, was a low grade board. I was offered low grade for it, and they had some real nice fuses, gold plated cap fuses. I showed you the little ones, and so a big IC there. I took that off, and this still classes as a low grade board. My buyer pays it as, so I managed to remove stuff, the most valuable stuff, and I still got the same price for it. But if it goes down to that, that is not a low grade board, that's just rubbish it'll have pretty much no gold in there and obviously you get the ram no gold but on there it has some gold plating which is thin not really worth your time I suppose you get a lot they're worth it uh, the main one I like to talk about which people always leave and forget about is your uh, CPUs if you have any uh, the new modern CPUs Check out my video where I removed uh, the caps. Don't remove them with a chisel or anything. Remove them the way I showed. Because they come off like this. If you remove them badly, it will have the silicon dye over that. And it'd be this will be worthless pretty much. You can just scrape it off and you'll get this gold plating. Which the gold plating is surprisingly thick. Uh, as you see, that's what the top looks like. The This metal here, because it doesn't have the silicon dye on, I can scrape it off easy. And that's indium. It's worth more than silver by weight. So, amazing metal to collect. Uh, I've just been doing a tidy up out here. I've been uh, I'm selling all my boards off. So I've got stuff everywhere at the moment because I'm all sorting through it all. 
and stuff just keeps falling everywhere but hopefully it will be gone by next week and I might keep a little box of boards but most of this will be gone anyway thanks for watching my video don't forget to subscribe it helps out a lot uh, if you do subscribe press the bell button next to it so you get notifications every time I upload and I hope you enjoyed the video bye, -bye.